Towards the end of last year, I briefly played the Black Crusade tabletop RPG with some other tabletop role players. I was actually thinking of recording the sessions and putting them up on YouTube, but we only actually lasted for four sessions before a bunch of the guys couldn't play anymore due to the school semester ending and most of our players leaving. I decided not to put up the sessions since they don't have a conclusion, but I did want to talk about my overall experience as well as address some of the common criticisms I see about this game. Fantasy Flight Games made a whole series of 40k RPG games that all have the same core mechanics based on a D100 system, things like combat and skill checks, while each game has additional premise specific mechanics that make the game unique. For example, Rogue Trader, where you play as space explorers, has rules for spaceships, while Only War, where you play as Imperial Guard soldiers, has players get their equipment through supply lines and logistics instead of buying it like in a more standard RPG. So the games are all PARTIALLY compatible with each other. NPCs can be taken from one game and put in another without any issues except maybe being abnormally strong or weak, but moving player characters from one system to another takes a bit more work. The games are no longer being printed and updated due to Fantasy Flight Games losing the rights to Games Workshop's IPs. The two companies were having issues with each other when FFG got a hold of the rights to make a tabletop RPG for Star Wars. Realizing they now had a significantly bigger franchise to cash in on, FFG decided that whatever disputes they had with Games Workshop weren't worth it and bailed. There's a new 40k RPG out now made by a different company with completely different mechanics called Wrath and Glory, but this video isn't about that. The Fantasy Flight 40k RPGs are a bit divisive, at least as far as rules go. There are people who love them and people who say they aren't very good. And Black Crusade RPG gets some of the harshest criticisms leveled at it. So in this video, I'll be talking about my personal experience with the game system, my thoughts about it, and answering some of these criticisms. First of all, let me just say that the lore of Fantasy Flight's 40k RPGs is fantastic. In fact, I prefer it to most of the lore Games Workshop was writing around the same time. The two don't contradict each other or anything, I just find FFG's fictional world building much better written and more compelling than some of the work done by certain <coughs> Games Workshop writers of the time. But while the fictional setting is important to tabletop RPGs, more important than most other games, I would argue, since the players have a lot more freedom, the mechanics are also a vital part of the experience, and these are what a lot of people found lacking. In Black Crusade RPG, you take control of some Servants of Chaos, making it unique among the RPG lineup since the rest of them cover loyal Servants of the Imperium. You can play as either a normal human or a Chaos Space Marine, which is a genetically modified superhuman. Our group was entirely Chaos Space Marines except for one normal human character. And this is one of the big things people complain about with the Black Crusade. You've got human and superhuman characters, and they're definitely not balanced with each other. The Chaos Space Marines are just way, way better at combat. It's completely one-sided. Of course, anything else would be inaccurate to the lore. Now, there are Space Marines in other Fantasy Flight 40k RPGs, but in Death Watch, every player is a Space Marine, and in the other games, they only appear as allies or enemies. Black Crusade lets players run a mixed group, which is certainly challenging due to the power differences. Fortunately, our GM had thought of a setup for our first adventure that made good use of all our abilities. It was a heist. We were going to an Imperial Shrine world to steal the world's most holy artifact, a single strand of the Emperor's hair. Of course, the hair was locked up in a shrine that had maximum security, including an entire retinue of Loyalist Space Marines, on top of its human guards. On top of that, we had a little twist to deal with. We were getting the hair for Mad Chaos Scientist Fabius Bile, but in true Chaos fashion, he'd made it a competition. He got four Chaos Lords who were working for him to put together four separate teams, all trying to grab the hair before the others. So on top of the Imperium defenses, we had three other Chaos teams on the planet to worry about. Even with most of our teams stacked with superhuman killers, it was a formidable challenge. So we decided to try and take a covert route. We had two aces up our sleeve to help us do this. One was an inside man who was a high ranking member of the local Arbites, that is, the local police, and the other was our human apostate character. The apostate archetype in Black Crusade is kind of like if the rogue and bard from D&D had an evil baby. They're pretty weak in combat and have no psychic powers, but they're extremely good at infiltrating organizations and getting people to like them. 
So with the help of our Arbiter contact, we were able to get our apostate the paperwork to impersonate one of the three cardinals on the planet, because only a cardinal could get access to the chamber where the hair was being kept. Our apostate character was played by a guy, but the character was a woman, and one of the three cardinals on the planet was also a woman, so that was who she was impersonating. The rest of us needed to get suits of loyalist power armor to blend in. We already had one set of Black Templar armor that one of the characters had acquired thanks to their backstory, but we needed two more. So because we were crunched for time, we decided to have our apostate and one of our Chaos Marines go scope out the shrine with the disguises we had, while the other two, including me, went to an abandoned building on the outskirts of town where our Arbiter friend lured two Loyalist Marines for us to ambush. The ambush part of the plan went perfectly. We killed the two marines very quickly before they could raise any kind of alarm. Back in the shrine, our two compatriots hit a little snag. They got in to look at the hair fine. They were being watched too closely to actually take the hair, so they turned around to leave. As they were on their way out, one of the other cardinals on the planet met them coming in. And of course, this guy knew the cardinal our apostate was impersonating, so she wasn't going to be able to fool him. Our compatriot tried to avoid him and get out of there, but unfortunately the real Cardinal walked up to our fake Cardinal and started asking her some standard questions, like, who are you and why are you here? And our fake Cardinal, knowing that the jig was about to be up, did something absolutely spectacular. Apostates begin the game with a little pocket-sized chaos emblem. It has no special powers. Normally, it's a fairly useless item that's just there for flavor. Our apostate player decides to perform a sleight of hand to slip this emblem into the real cardinal's pocket and accuse him of being a traitor before he can accuse her. It was a very tough test because everyone in the area is watching, but he passed with flying colors. Unfortunately, he did a bit less well during the subsequent rounds of questioning, going back and forth between succeeding and failing at his bluff checks, until finally, Shrine Security decided to throw both the cardinal and the apostate into a prison cell together to deal with later. Because it's the Imperium. And of course they have a cell to lock them in right in the basement of the shrine. Because it's the Imperium. Fortunately, our other Marine that was with our apostate managed to get out of there and explain to us what happened. So we're hiding in a nearby building, watching the place, trying to figure out what to do when the Corn Berserkers attack. Yeah, one of those other groups that were working for Bile tried to just crash the front gate, and right after they get into it with the Marines guarding the place, another group attacks from the back. We're still all dressed up like loyalists, so I was like, hey, let's see if we can get in there, which we did. Then we started slaughtering our way through the shrine using a very simple strategy. We would pretend to be on the loyalist side until they turned their backs on us, then we would immediately move in for the kill. This proved extremely effective. We even managed to catch a Chaos Sorcerer off guard because he saw us killing some Loyalists and thought we were on his side. While everything was going swimmingly up top, down in the basement, the true epic battle of the session was going on. That Cardinal that our Apostate had been locked up with had woken up and immediately started doing his best to kill her. It was a fight between a 90 pound woman and an elderly man, both of whom were about as far as you could get from a character who was built for combat, and neither of whom had any weapons, but their bare hands and the shackles that were binding them. And it just kept going back and forth, noses bloodied, shoulders got dislocated, finally the Cardinal managed to get his shackles around our apostate's neck and strangle her until she passed out. Bad! Up top, we'd managed to grab the hair with minimal damage, and honestly, it probably would have made sense to just leave, but since I had sort of taken position as the de facto leader of the group, mostly by being the loudest, I decided we were going to try and find and rescue our apostate. Now, this was a bit of metagaming. I didn't want his character to die because that wouldn't be very fun for him. But you could also justify it as me saving the apostate because she had proven she could be useful. My character was a noise marine who was motivated by doing things for the lulls basically anyway, so you could also say he just found it amusing. Regardless, we managed to make our way down to the apostate, killed the old man who was in the process of strangling her very quickly, and we made our way back out of the shrine. That was the first session. After that, we had a bit of an adventure with some Eldar, where unfortunately, our apostate ended up having far less to do because it ended up being more combat heavy. And that adventure arc didn't quite finish before the group disbanded. Now, I will say, I had an absolute blast playing Black Crusade, but let's address some of the criticisms, because they're not all unfounded, although I think a lot of them are exaggerated. 
The first big complaint that pops up over and over again is that it's a very difficult game to run because of the huge power difference between the human and Chaos Space Marine characters, and this is an issue that the GM is going to need to deal with one way or another. But right away, there are two incredibly easy fixes if you think the difference in combat ability will be too much to handle. Just run a human-only or Chaos Space Marine-only group. If you're the GM, you're absolutely within your rights to do that. Sure, there are only four archetypes for each race in the main rulebook, but archetypes in Black Crusade are less restrictive than classes in D&D, so those four archetypes have quite a bit of variety to them. And on top of that, you've got four additional source books that each add some new archetypes to use as alternatives. Before I joined the group I did, I was toying with the idea of running my own Black Crusade game sometime and having it be human characters only. The other alternative is to let your players run whatever they want, even if it results in a mixed group. This is certainly more challenging for the GM, but it's far from undoable. The easiest way to do it is probably to look at the Chaos Space Marines as the dedicated combat characters, and the human characters as the dedicated infiltration and support characters, and make sure both groups have something to do in each scenario. I think a big weakness when doing this is actually Black Crusade's standard setting. While you can play in any part of the 40k galaxy, the part of the setting that gets the most attention and loving detail within the Black Crusade game itself is the Screaming Vortex, a portion of space that's covered by a warp storm and is entirely under the sway of chaos. This is a big problem, I think, for a lot of mixed groups, because there's much less motivation to try and be low-key and secretive running around the Screaming Vortex than working covertly within the Imperium. In the Imperium, there are these massive institutions looming over every planet, constant watchful eyes that could squash even the incredibly powerful Chaos Space Marines like a bug if they draw too much attention. Also, and this is extremely important, in the Imperium, Space Marines exist apart from the rest of society. They're monastic warrior monks who keep their own company and only mingle with the puny humans when they need to perform some service. As such, they stick out like a sore thumb. A space marine being where he's not supposed to is highly noticeable and will immediately draw the attention of those previously mentioned watchful eyes. But in areas of space controlled by chaos, this separation doesn't exist. Chaos controlled areas have much looser rules, if they aren't in a state of complete lawlessness. Chaos space marines have rejected most of their monastic vows, if not all of them, and are usually the big bullies on the block, going where they want and taking what they want. So for mixed gaming groups playing somewhere like the Screaming Vortex or the Eye of Terror, it's a lot easier for Space Marines to completely overshadow the human characters, because the human character's ability to blend in isn't nearly as important or useful. I love the background of the Screaming Vortex. It's really cool to read these detailed histories and ecologies of these hellish demon worlds and the people who live on them. But I have to wonder if the game actually plays better when the default setting is ditched for a setting within the Imperium that encourages a sneakier playstyle. Of course, I understand why they didn't use a setting within the Imperium. Because Fantasy Flight Games already gave us one of those with the Dark Heresy RPG. So the Screaming Vortex was focused on in Black Crusade to give us a new, distinct setting instead of more of the same. And this brings up one of the problems I think people have with Fantasy Flight Games, 40k RPGs as a whole. Is each game self-contained, or are they supplements of each other? Because a lot of the time, it feels like the games are trying to do both. I do think any Fantasy Flight 40k game can be improved by using the books for other games in the series as a resource, and I think that's especially true for Black Crusade. For mixed groups, it just works better to play in the Imperium, because the overpowered Chaos Space Marines are much more limited in what they can do and get away with. You could also come up with reasons to limit the Chaos Space Marines while playing in the game's established setting, but it's going to take more work and creativity for the GM. Another reason is that even with the GM making an effort to give the human player something to do, building human characters geared toward combat is pretty much pointless when you've got Chaos Space Marines on the team. Any Space Marine character is just so much better at combat than any human character. This means that the Renegade archetype, the Chaos equivalent of a human guardsman, is almost completely pointless in a mixed gaming group, unless you want a character who's nothing but a designated vehicle driver. And even then, you can have a heretic do that, plus a lot more. So yeah, mixed groups aren't impossible to run well, but they're certainly a lot trickier. Another criticism I've seen leveled at the 40k RPG system in general is that it encourages a murder hobo playstyle. That is, characters who use violence to solve everything and have no attachments to anything in the setting. This one I just strongly disagree with. 
Combat in Fantasy Flight's 40k RPGs is ridiculously lethal compared to a lot of RPGs. This is well known. And while it does enable the player characters to kill enemies very quickly, it's a sword that cuts both ways. Even the extremely powerful Chaos Space Marine characters can die in a couple of hits if things go badly. One of our Marine players was almost killed by Eldar and had to pledge himself to Nurgle to save himself, something our GM made clear he could only do once. So actually there's a pretty strong incentive to avoid combat, at least until you have an advantage and can strike first. If anything, I would say the Fantasy Flight 40k RPGs encourage stealth kills, which we employed very successfully on our first mission. That means a lot of sneaking or disguise wearing instead of full frontal assaults. As far as having no attachments to any groups in the setting, I strongly disagree with that too. The peer talent is extremely useful. There are a whole lot of influential groups already in the setting, and being able to enlist their support, whether they know your true objectives or not, is extremely useful. Dark Heresy also has the minions mechanic, where player characters can gather NPCs who become loyal to them and will do whatever they're asked. Our group had tons of fun collecting minions. One player summoned a bunch of nerglings to help him out, who quickly started running wild through our ship, getting on our corn champion's nerves. Personally, I collected two minions. One was a knife-handed demon called the Hungering Flush, and the other was a Dark Eldar slave we released. He was just a normal, cowardly human, and our GM didn't really intend for us to do anything with him except maybe use him as cannon fodder or a sacrifice. But I decided I was going to make something of him. So I gave him a gun and had him follow me around, giving me assistance, until I convinced him to ritualistically sacrifice a captured Eldar Harlequin. This earned him Slanesh's blessing, our GM rolled to see how he would benefit, and he gained the Flush Shaper power, the innate ability to reshape living things, which unlocked an enormous amount of potential for him to be useful. So while you might assume that Black Crusade would be a game that lent itself to a murder hobo playstyle better than any, Far from encouraging a style of play where players have no attachment to any in-game community, Black Crusade actually encourages players to build their own community around themselves with the minions they gather, and options for minions of chaos are pretty much only limited to the GM's imagination. I loved this mechanic. Not only was it extremely useful for completing missions, it also opened up some great role-playing opportunities. A later game, Only War, has similar mechanics with comrades, but comrades in the Imperial Guard can't match the sheer variety of Minions of Chaos in Black Crusade. I could go on even more, but those are the main points I wanted to make about the game. One of the other challenges people have is running a group full of evil, or evil in quotes as the case may be here, characters with selfish goals. And that's a subject I've already addressed in a past video, the problem with evil characters in tabletop RPGs. So check out that video if you want to hear me discuss the challenges of that and the solutions for them. Overall, I would say that Black Crusade is one of the more challenging tabletop RPGs to run, it's true, especially if you allow players to run a mixed group of human and marine characters, but I also think it can be a tremendously fun and unique experience. It really is a lot different than a standard D&D style game, and has so many possibilities for unique ways your character can develop and grow stronger. Did I mention that my character learned how to create demonic paintings? Yeah, that was cool. Anyway. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to like, and subscribe and ring the bell if you want to see more. If you've played Black Crusade or any of the other Final Fantasy Flight games, 40k RPGs, and you have your own thoughts on them, please leave them in the comments down below. And I would love to hear your thoughts if you've played the new Wrath and Glory 40k RPG. I'd be interested to hear how that measures up too. Thanks for watching, and as always, have a great day. If you're a freak like me,